What the... Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's uh, it's not upsetting. It's just that it's snowing outside and it's April and um, I did a 7 a.m. premiere this morning of our last video so go check that one out if you haven't already and uh, someone wrote uh, good morning from sunny Spain and I just wanted to cry because it's not sunny here. Anyhow, we have some sales uh, that we made on our old eBay store, some hard goods and a pair of jeans. I'm going to grab those out of the basement first, head over to the warehouse and get to work on this beautiful snowy Monday morning. Definitely nice to see some sales off the old store. They're not for a ton of money, but a lot of this is, you know, near 100% profit. Uh, some of these Polaris shirts sold, this Apple TV we got in a bundle a while ago, this mug, uh, it's all profit, these jeans didn't sell for much but that's okay, they're old stock, and another one of those ceiling fan uh, pieces from our old ceiling fan sold. I'm going to grab those first and uh, head over to the shop. It's not surprising that it's snowing in mid-April. Uh, Michigan is uh, a very confused weather state. We'll get uh, snow in April and then sometimes we'll even get some like ice storms and snowstorms uh, early mid-May, which is kind of crazy. But then usually after May, things kind of calm down and you know spring arrives, which is too bad because a lot of flowers and um, uh, trees and, and other plants start to bloom and then they get frozen over again and it kind of messes up the cycle, but it is what it is. In today's video, we'll talk a little bit about scaling and growth with your eBay business. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Edine and with my beautiful wife, Melinda, we run a eBay reselling business where we primarily resell used clothing and shoes. And we also have a small YouTube channel where we share our adventure. We recently, about two weeks ago, got into our first warehouse space. So we've been uh, updating everyone on how that's been progressing. So I'll show you a little bit of an update. I worked Saturday on it with my friend AJ. We didn't do anything on Sunday. We celebrated Easter, so happy Easter to everyone that celebrates it. Uh, today, we're going to pick some orders, get shipping done. I'm not going to spend a lot of time at the warehouse. I do have to price out a couple of boxes and get a potential supplier paid. And then after that, I'm heading home to do listings and whatnot. So I'm not gonna spend too much time there, but I will take you along with me. Let's get going. Yesterday, there was a very good reminder to be very grateful and thankful for what we have. Um, just four or five houses down from us, our neighbor's home burned down. I don't know the story. Um, I found out on my way back from my mother-in-law's house. Family's fine. It seems like all you know, members of the family and pets were all safe. The house structure is still there, but the uh, you know, obviously there's irreversible damage on the inside. I don't know what uh, efforts there are going to be uh, here locally to, to help the family out. If anyone is interested in that, uh, shoot us a message over on Instagram and we can give you some details once we find some out. Uh, obviously happy that all the uh, folks and pets made it out safe, but yeah, just another reminder, you know, be thankful, be grateful for what you have, uh, give your loved ones a hug because uh, this life stuff is fickle. With it being uh, so cold outside, uh, I'm assuming it's like 35 outside. I, I haven't, I haven't looked. We don't have our heat on here, and it's 55, which you know it's on the colder side, but that's fine. We're not going to heat the space um, very much, if at all. That was bright, uh, because it doesn't make sense to. We're not here 24/7, uh, right? In the warehouse. Smells like marijuana again, whatever. Um, it's at 53 degrees, so the cinder block definitely helps uh, keep it relatively warm, right? So 20 degree difference between inside and outside, not too bad. It's a warehouse after all, it doesn't need to be heated. 
So if you didn't watch the last video, here's where we're at with uh, racking. So we got uh, nine rows in and most of the shelving installed. Um, these doors are now completely blocked off uh, by shelving units. You can't really get through. Nice and sturdy. I haven't secured the last three because, like I mentioned in the previous video, I couldn't get my ladder through here because of where we restacked this, but it's fine. So later on we'll get to this. I can ob obviously get a normal ladder in here too if I needed to. But for the most part it's done. The hard part is done for sure. I'm going to start this morning off by picking some orders. I'll show you guys some highlights uh, of what's sold. I think we have some 30-ish orders going out. Again, you know, a sub-average weekend. Um, there's going to be a few more of these until we get everything uh, working the way it's supposed to in here, everything organized and you know systems put in place. For right now our sales are going to be slower and we understand that and we understand that this month we're probably going to be basically breaking even with you know the new overhead expenses and so on and so forth but that's okay because we've put ourselves in a financial situation where we can break even the first month or even the second month but we're not going to allow ourselves to do that right the first month is going to be about break even slightly clunky second month and forward are going to be profitable and we'll do a uh, cash flow video at the end of this month just to kind of show you guys what that looks like uh, for us and we'll explain how much this place costs and so on and so forth also looking forward to plugging in my phone into the laptop. I hope Melinda uh, found the solution to our slow hotspot connection by simply connecting the cell phone into the laptop as that, that's what the instruction said to do. So I hope I do that and I hope it's not a fluke and it works perfectly. I'll see you in a moment. Got all the orders picked. It took me roughly 44 minutes to pick 31 items. Not horrible. Again, again, just collecting that data as a baseline so we can compare. I'll show you some of the highlights. The first one is this Lucky Brand Distinctive Western Plate button-up shirt. I'm going to mention this one because uh, the brand Lucky isn't you know, the most sought after, but there's definitely a huge market when it comes to Western attire. This is just a simple button-down, and it's sold within a couple of months on Poshmark for $25, full asking price plus shipping. Another one that's not really a great brand, but workwear in general is a really good seller on eBay. Uh, secondhand, this is a XXL C.E. Schmidt uh, work vest. We found four of them for $4 a piece uh, somewhere in Indiana, I think, while we were traveling. They're a bit of a slower seller, but again, work gear, work wear, uh, even if it's blemish, sells pretty well. 22 plus ship on Posh. These New Balance 580 Elites sold on Poshmark as well. Uh, a little bit worn, some light blemishes, but a full price sale, $30 plus shipping. A brand that we wouldn't pay much for, I think we got these for a dollar or less. Uh, they're Apartment 9, they're just cheap, fake leather, you know, dress shoes. They're, they're a wingtip, they're, you know, they look nice, but they're just cheap. You can already see some of the chips on the bottom. Nevertheless, we sold them for $19 on Poshmark, uh, they'll pay shipping on top. Over on eBay, we sold this Madewell, uh, these are overalls, fashion overalls. They sold for $29.50 plus shipping on top. They did have a large blemish in the back pocket. Still, Madewell is a really strong brand to look out for and it sells really quickly. I've never heard of this brand. This is a very interesting shoe. It's well worn and we described all the blemishes, of course. The brand is... Lanvin. I assume they're Italian. I'm, I'm really not sure. We got these in a, a big shoe buyout from a, a friend out of Texas and they sold for $39 plus shipping on top even in this condition which is kind of wild. Let us know if you want us to cover some uh, sandal brands that are pretty crazy as far as the resale market goes in an upcoming video. The last one from uh, the eBay store I'll share in this video is this vintage Michigan University uh, 90s crew neck sweater. It sold for 22 bucks plus shipping on top. You'll notice that a lot of our sales are in that 20 to $30 mark. Uh, that's the thing when you're doing this business model, you're not going to get a bunch of, you know, 200, 500, $700 sales. You will occasionally run into some pretty rare stuff. You know, occasionally we'll sell some clothing pieces between that 100 and $300 mark. Just depends on a brand and, you know, what we end up finding or what's sent to us. 
I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff packaged up and then we'll talk a little bit about scaling and growth and I'll show you our progress over the last three months or four months since we switched into this business model. All done packing, uh, didn't take too long, about average, let's see, it was uh, 13 minutes, 16 seconds to pack 20 articles of clothing, uh, which is pretty good, you know, 39, 45 seconds a piece or something like that. And then 10 minutes, 9 seconds for 11 pairs of shoes. So just under a minute a pair, which is pretty good. Again, just a baseline. We love working in this area because there's tons of really good Mexican restaurants around us. I'm going to go grab some tacos for lunch and I'll take you with me just to shut out the place because A, it's really good. I'm very hard on restaurants uh, as far as quality and safety goes because, you know, 15 years of my career has been spent in the food industry and I love I love this place because they're family run, family operated. Uh, the father is cooking in the back, the daughter is up front uh, handling customer service and it's just good stuff. And you can tell when you talk to a restaurant uh, owner, um, obviously the, the taste is there, the quality is there, but you can talk to them about quality and taste. And the fact that she said that they don't like to use onions the next day if they're chopped fresh because they don't taste the same is just I love that because they understand food quality and food safety for sure. So I'm going to grab some tacos because they're the best in town. So the place is called Mega Tacos and it's located here in Grand Rapids, Clyde Park and 36th Street. Uh, they do a really good job. Uh, they really do. If you enjoy traditional Mexican food, uh, they definitely have very traditional toppings. Give it a shot. They're very good. Thank you, Jackie, and your family. Uh, the food is amazing. Uh, we've been here many times and we'll be here many, many, many more times. Shipping's all done. So we got uh, everything packaged and labeled. I have two boxes from a fella in Tennessee that he sent that I'm gonna price out next. Those are right here. Uh, I'm gonna get these priced out. I'll show you guys some of the highlights. But before I get into that, let's talk about scaling the business and review some numbers. Let's go over a couple of key terms first. So what, what do I mean by scaling? So scaling, uh, same thing as growing a company, right? One of the main reasons we switched over just to sell shoes and clothing instead of uh, everything, because we wanted to put in systems in place where we can grow the business, plug employees into and let employees run the business for us. That's the ultimate goal. That's our long-term goal. That's why we switched over. The 90-day total on eBay is a good indicator of if you're growing or making more money, but it's really a kind of like a pat in the back. It doesn't really mean anything. It's almost like a false number, right? And what I mean by that is that that 90 day total that everyone gets as an eBay seller. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you. When you open up your eBay app, if, if you're new to this, uh, under selling, there's going to be a, a number at the top. So here's our number, right? I'm not sure if it's going to focus or not, but what this says is that we have 2029 active listings, 619 have sold in the last 90 days and 399 unsold. Or in other words, 399 sold on different platform. That's what we use the unsold for. And our 90 day total is $22,787.36. That 22,000 is how much gross income we've brought in over the last three months off this one store account. Now remember, we also sell on Poshmark, a little bit of Mercari, and we also sell on another eBay store, our old one. So that's not the total we've brought in. The total realistically is between thirty-five and forty thousand dollars in the last ninety months in gross. If you combine all of our sales across all the platforms, the tricky part with that twenty-two thousand seven hundred eighty-seven dollars is that it's all inclusive how much we brought in. So it doesn't take into consideration cost of goods. It doesn't take into consideration how many items have sold. It's the total amount, so it's the gross sale of the individual item or bundle, plus the sales tax if applicable, plus the shipping on top of that. So it's all together. So if you see this shared on social media, know that you can literally sell one car for $100,000 on eBay and your 90 day total is now $100,000. No one knows if you made money or lost money. That's, that's the whole point, right? It's not an accurate number. So you have to take it with a grain of salt. The numbers I'm going to show you next is our uh, our data going back to January when we switched over just to do shoes and clothing. The nice thing about our 90 day total is that we have a few constants. For example, the store only sells shoes and clothing. There might be like one or two old listings on there. 
uh, that may be like a vintage toy. So it's like 99.9% .9 clothes and shoes. Our cost of goods has relatively, you know, stayed the same between four and eight dollars per unit. So that's a pretty good constant, even though it's not an exact number. But on average, you know, we're probably spending about six dollars per unit that we flip. So those are good things because when we're comparing month to month growth, we need to keep constants in, in place, right? And we have the same model over and over again, which again makes these numbers a little bit more relevant to understand. So let's go back to January and look at the numbers from January a month later into February of this year. All right, so January 2022, our numbers are as follows, $6,953 for the 90 day total and 549 active uh, listings. Let me put that on the, uh, on the board. January gross sales listings. Fast forward a month later, February of 2022, our 90 days sales total grew to 11,439, 1,359 active listings. So we, uh, we scaled up roughly 900 listings, you know, 800 listings or so. So pretty good. Let me plop that on the board. So pretty good for a month. Uh, you know, 7,000 to 11,400, uh, roughly $4,000 uh, gain in gross sales. Pretty good. Remember, this is all numbers that we did out of our own home uh, back in the day before we got into this warehouse space, which is something to keep in mind as we continue to scale. Um, on to March, so one month later, our 90 day total was at $16,003 with 1,615 active listings. Not shabby at all. We went from 11.4 to 16, so roughly four and a half thousand dollar gross sale uh, increase month over month, with about you know gaining roughly 300 more listings. And then the March to April uh, month, we went from 16,003 to 22,011 dollars, with 2,033 listings. So not too shabby, right? Um, it's been relatively a slower growing month, again, because of this giant move. So right now we're at 22,787. We're kind of staying steady at that 22,000. So once we get all these systems in place, then we can expect more growth, right? So this is what I meant by having a break even month or, or pretty close break even month. So let's take a look at these numbers side by side. I'm showing you this because I want you to understand that you know, reselling or any, and really any business doesn't just blow out of uh, the waters. You have to start somewhere, right? So four months in roughly, we went from 7,000 to 22,000 in gross sales, just selling used shoes and used clothing. We went from 550 to 2,000, um, roughly 2,033 active listings. And again, these numbers change, right? Every single day as that 90 day total changes old sales drop off, new sales get added. I hope that kind of brings things into perspective for those who are wondering about scaling an eBay business. Understand it, it, it does take time. It does take some initial capital to get stuff going, but over time you can do it. And some people are going to do it at a slower pace, some at a faster pace. You always have to remember that comparison is the thief of joy, right? So if we're doing in, in your mind's eye, in your opinion, if we're doing well or great or fantastic or poor or lame or bad, it doesn't matter. There's no reason to compare your business to our business because we, you know, we, we're different, right? We might be selling different brands or different styles or different quantities or different items. Our cost of goods might be different, et cetera, et cetera. Again, these numbers here, they don't equate to the amount of cash we put in our pockets. That comes after fees and taxes and shipping, so on and so forth, right? Cost of goods, etc. So that's not our net profit of what we put in our pocket. On average, our you know typical reseller margins are like 40 to 60 percent. It just depends on who the person is that's doing it. Anyways, the reason why we got the space is again to scale the business. So now that you know we have space to get processes in place. Uh, we have space to grow. It's going to take about another two, three weeks to get a lot of these things, a lot of these systems, you know, ironed out and figured out, the inventory rehauled, so on and so forth. Uh, but once that's done, then we can expect a lot faster growth and we're definitely looking forward to that. 
let's take a look and see what's inside of those two boxes. Okay, uh, looks like it's going to be all clothing from what I can tell. I'm not 100% sure though, so we'll, we'll find out together. The first one that strikes me is uh, a very cool, uh, looks like Hudson. Hudson outerwear, but it's a USA Star Spangled Banner uh, emblem shirt, brand new with tags. No idea what that's worth. I'm going to go ahead and go through all of this stuff, see what's inside, and then uh, maybe I'll pick like five of my favorite pieces or so, and I'll show you guys what uh, what we got in here. All this was sent by a reseller who's downsizing, and um, he says he has plenty more. He buys way too much and doesn't list most of it. At least that's what I remember from our conversation. I've dealt with several different suppliers so far and I don't know everyone's story but looks like a good mix of tops and bottoms which is good. Looks like some sweaters in here. Again I'll show you some highlights. I did get more hangers in so as I'm unboxing all this I'm gonna get it hung so it's all uh, ready for processing and it looks like we got our um, Grandma's Secret Sneaker Cleaner, uh, recommended by Ryan and Lizzie or Rinzi over on Instagram. They also have a YouTube channel, I'll put their link in the bottom if you want to check them out. They haven't uploaded a lot of YouTube content, but they are very active on Instagram. Uh, this is uh, what they use, so we'll give it a shot. And then these hangers are great because they have um, the attachments so we can convert the basic hanger into a uh, hanger for bottoms as well. I stand corrected. There are actually shoes in here as well. So it looks like a mix of shoes and clothing articles. Articles. Nice. So we'll see what's uh, what's lurking. Just finished pricing both these boxes up. The uh, maintenance guy paid me a visit and showed me the furnace. So there's a secret way to the mezzanine, which is uh, through the ceiling tiles up here. So right here at this wall, it's actually concrete up there, which is kind of crazy. But now I know how to get up there. Uh, here are some of the highlights of this box. So shoes wise, uh, some nice Wrangler boots. These Reeboks are uh, lifting shoes. Uh, there's only one sold comp for a hundred, so it might be a little bit slower seller, but uh, definitely a neat shoe. Some basic Asics, some uh, Sambas a little bit beat up, some Ted um, Baker London, Keens, Vans. Uh, first time ever seeing this brand it's snibs these go anywhere from 25 to 60 so that's a pretty interesting uh, shoe first time ever looking it up we got a couple of rejects uh, these are just a bit too worn the heels have too much drag and then these allen Edmonds, same thing the heels are just a bit busted and then two pairs of corduroy ones uh, chaps and the other ones lands and they're just low value super slow sellers nice stack of pants and jeans that i do want to buy and then all of these uh, here as well. So a couple of highlights. Uh, there's three Raiders jerseys, a car jersey, a uh, inaugural season 2020 Riggs uh, the third jersey, a Antonio Brown. I assume that's Antonio Brown with the uh, Raiders, uh, the military edition, an Ariat rebar vest, really nice piece. First time ever looking up this brand, Salumbra. It's like a hiking brand, a nice... Uh, nice brand. Uh, a couple of monster shirts, pretty rare on eBay, worth anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks a piece, which is pretty neat. Some Vineyard Vine, some LLB, a lot of just very nice common pieces, nothing too crazy in here. A uh, nice cool piece, Carhartt, uh, Patagonia, Patagonia, Columbia, North Face, uh, looks to be a vintage Green Base, Packers, uh, Proline, uh, Ralph Lauren, Polo, so on and so forth. As far as pants, some Abercrombie and Fitch corduroy, some Polo corduroy, um, just basic Levi's, one that fell on the floor, uh, Wolverine, decent brand, uh, REI, decent brand, Tommy Hilfiger. So again, nothing too crazy, some pearl uh, button snaps from BKE, um, Orvis, uh, Mountain Hard Gear, a lot of like really common brands, but this is what we want to flip. I'm going to take off from the office here shortly. I just have to get this gentleman paid. Uh, once I do that, I'm off home to do the listings from home. It's a bit more comfortable there, of course. You know, Mona's there, Jessica's there, Toddy's there. I'm not all by myself. So I'm going to do that, get all the packages dropped off on my way home, of course, and go from there. 
Appreciate you guys as always uh, for tuning in. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Hit the like button on your way out if you enjoy the content and if you'd like to please do subscribe to the channel. It helps us reach more people and uh, grow our channel. Until then, take care. Goodbye.